double agents, death threats, drug charges, and a whole lot of celebrities accused of communism. Which celebrities had the most interesting FBI files? John Lennon, co-founder of the Beatles and civil rights activist, was the direct target of numerous years of FBI surveillance. Probably more than any other celebrity, the ongoing FBI investigation seriously impacted Lennon's life and threatened his ability to live in the United States altogether. The FBI's concern with Lennon was related to his liberal political activism, which was basically the complete opposite of the views of the president at the time, Richard Nixon. Lennon was outspoken about the Vietnam War, and the FBI was concerned that he was bankrolling organizations associated with liberal causes. As a result of the investigations and pressure from the Nixon administration, the Immigration and Naturalization Service refused to renew Lennon's green card over a prior drug conviction. Upon appeal, Lennon was allowed to stay in the U.S., thwarting Nixon and the FBI. There are more than 500 pages in Lennon's FBI file showing the extreme level of surveillance he was subjected to. They're even sort of changing their own rules to, to get us, you know, just because we're peaceniks, really. Yeah. Boxing legend and civil rights activist Muhammad Ali was another target of FBI surveillance. Ali first gained prominence after winning an Olympic gold medal in 1960, and he soon went on to become the most famous boxer in American history. He won the heavyweight championship three times and was part of some of the most memorable bouts of all time. He was born Cassius Clay, but changed his name to Ali in 1964 after becoming affiliated with the Nation of Islam. This is when the FBI started to take notice. Why do you insist on being called Muhammad Ali now? Well, that's the name given to me by my leading teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's my right. original name. That's a black man named Cassius Clay was my slave name. Ali's FBI file dates mainly to 1966 and explicitly deals with his connections to the Nation of Islam. Using information from a confidential informant, the FBI was concerned about Ali's creation of a company to promote his boxing career, as they thought that some of that income would find its way to the Nation of Islam and Elijah Muhammad, the nation's controversial leader. In total, Ali's file is just short of 1,000 pages and even includes potential newspaper columns intended to, in the words of the Bureau, embarrass and disrupt the racist black nationalist nation of Islam. Ali later ran into more legal trouble over his opposition to the Vietnam War, which affected his boxing career, but he again ultimately prevailed, winning his case before the Supreme Court. By 1969, Jimi Hendrix was one of the biggest names in rock music, and he was also another FBI target. According to his FBI file, Hendrix had been arrested for possession of marijuana while in Toronto, Canada in the spring of 1969. The Canadian government was interested in deporting Hendrix regardless of whether or not he was convicted and seemed to be asking the FBI for information about any prior arrests that would help bolster their case. They pointed to a few arrests Hendrix had on his record from Seattle in 1961, which the FBI confirmed existed. Hendrix would eventually stand trial in Toronto over the possession charges, but was acquitted. Sadly, he would die less than a year later, cutting short one of the most brilliant careers in rock and roll history. Christopher Wallace, also known as the Notorious B.I.G. or Biggie Smalls, was only 23 years old when he was gunned down in Los Angeles in 1997. By then, he was already one of the biggest stars in the music industry. Wallace's FBI file has nothing to do with any criminal doings on his part. The files actually relate to his murder and the FBI's attempt to find the perpetrator. The FBI files go from 1997 to 2005 when they dropped their investigation and contain some interesting information. The first set of files has a description of the events surrounding his murder, though many details are redacted. It's unclear exactly who the file is referring to, but apparently several sources identified a shooter who owned the same car as the killer. The file also hints at both gang members and potentially even LAPD officers being involved. No one has ever been charged in Wallace's death, and it remains unsolved today. Legendary writer Ernest Hemingway has an FBI file more than 100 pages thick, and it dates back to the 1940s during the Second World War. Hemingway was living in Cuba at the time, and the FBI was aware of his attachment to Spain, as well as his relationship with several Spanish Republicans who had fled to Cuba. His file shows that he was on good terms with several American officials in Cuba, including the second secretary of the U.S. Embassy. For these reasons, the FBI considered him an attractive option for collaboration, and Hemingway began giving the FBI intelligence in September 1942. 
At the same time, Hemingway reportedly may also have been the target of FBI surveillance due to suspicions about those very same activities in Cuba. Hemingway ultimately provided intelligence to the U.S. from 1942 to 1944, before serving as a journalist in Europe during the war. Charlie Chaplin was a beloved comedian and entertainer who rose to fame in the early 20th century, becoming one of the first internationally famous movie stars. Chaplin's FBI file dates all the way back to 1922, when the FBI was concerned about Chaplin's potential communist connections. However, much of his file dates to the 1940s and was related to potential violations of the Mann Act, also known as the White Slave Traffic Act. The Mann Act was enacted to combat underage prostitution and made it illegal for an adult to take a minor across state lines for what they defined as immoral purposes. The FBI suspected that Chaplin had violated the act with Joan Barry, a young woman who was in the process of suing him over the paternity of her unborn child. The FBI files alleged that Chaplin had Barry brought from California to New York in October 1942 when he was speaking at a war rally at Carnegie Hall. MI5, the British version of the FBI, provided the FBI with information on Chaplin as they were concerned with his supposed communist ties. Ultimately, though, Chaplin was cleared of any wrongdoing. Of all the celebrities with FBI files on them, Dame Elizabeth Taylor might be the most surprising. Taylor was one of the most successful and influential movie stars in Hollywood history, a winner of multiple Academy Awards who appeared in countless all-time classic films. Taylor's FBI file was not the product of any investigations into her, but instead covered numerous harassment and extortion attempts against her from the 1940s all the way through the 1980s. The files don't have any information about potential convictions or prosecutions of any of the alleged extortionists or other criminals. However, it includes more than 150 pages and shows that she was subject to an appalling and frightening number of threats. I'm like a living example of, of what people can go through and survive. Taylor's file ends after 1987, so it's unclear if the FBI investigated any more extortion or death threats made against her. Taylor lived until the age of 79, passing away in 2011 in Los Angeles, California. Jackie Robinson was another important celebrity and civil rights activist who found himself in the crosshairs of the FBI. Robinson is best known for breaking the racial barrier in Major League Baseball with the Brooklyn Dodgers, becoming the first black player to suit up for a Major League team. Robinson's file covers many aspects of his life and details not only investigations into him by the FBI, but also threats made against him. Some of the FBI files date all the way back to the late 1940s and detail both death threats made against him while he was still a Dodger, as well as his potential links to communism. In the late 1940s, Robinson was suspected of being associated with numerous communist organizations and ended up testifying for the House Un-American Activities Committee. He emphasized his steadfast devotion to America, denying that he was a communist. Other files on him relate to his civil rights activities, including a demonstration he had led following the shooting of activist James H. Meredith in June 1966. Robinson was an active fighter for civil rights following his retirement. He died in 1972 at the age of 53 and was posthumously given the Presidential Medal of Freedom by Ronald Reagan. As the genius behind Apple Inc., Steve Jobs was another high-profile celebrity to have an extensive FBI file. Spanning just under 200 pages, his file deals with two things, a 1985 bomb threat made against Apple and a background report on him over his potential appointment to the U.S. President's Export Council. Apparently, not all of the people the FBI interviewed thought he would be the best fit for the job. Numerous individuals not only suggested that he had a history of drug use, but they also questioned Mr. Jobs' honesty. One of them commented about how she and Jobs used to experiment with drug use in the 1960s and 70s together, but implied that had stopped and Jobs was no longer a drug user. Despite these negative comments, Jobs apparently passed the test because he ultimately served on the council for two years. For several decades, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello performed together as the iconic comedy duo Abbott and Costello. As it turns out, in addition to sharing the stage for many years, they also had matching FBI files. Both of them are pretty wild, too. Costello's file has information from an informant remarking on his massive library of obscene films. It also details an incident involving Costello and two sex workers in Portland in December 1946 
possible connections he had to the underworld and his conviction over breaching copyright laws. Abbott's file also starts with references to his pornography collection, which must have rivaled his partners as it was more than 1,500 reels. Abbott's file has some other weird things in it, including a 1943 letter to the FBI from a woman living in Illinois who was listening to Abbott and Costello's radio program and wrote down a list of key words she thought were significant, apparently suspecting they were code words related to espionage. We're guessing the code words were third base. Who's in center field? No, who's on first? What's on first? What's on second? I don't know. Third base. Hollywood star Lucille Ball was another celebrity recipient of an FBI file. Ball's file relates to the mini-scandal that erupted in 1953, just months after she and her husband Desi Arnaz had their second child together. The FBI's concern had to do with her potential affiliation with the Communist Party, which was really just one huge misunderstanding, though it did briefly threaten her career. Back in 1936, Ball had registered as a communist, but only to support her grandfather. What started out as a relatively benign gesture to please her family turned into a huge incident. Ball was subpoenaed by the House Un-American Activities Committee for a private interview in September 1953 and had met with them earlier in the spring of 1952. Her FBI file contains references to her 1936 communist registration, as well as testimony from a reporter who claimed to have been at a communist party function at Ball's house in 1937. Ball was cleared of being a communist, but the scandal still broke on the news just days after her 1953 interview and almost destroyed her career. Luckily for fans of classic comedy, though, she was able to recover. For the better part of four decades, George Steinbrenner was the principal owner of the New York Yankees. His time running the team resulted in numerous championships, but also a lengthy suspension and legal trouble. In 1974, Steinbrenner was convicted of violating election law during the 1972 presidential campaign of Richard Nixon. His FBI files partly deal with the illegal activities Steinbrenner engaged in for the campaign. In addition, there were also anonymous letters talking about fraud and files related to Steinbrenner's eventual pardon for his 1974 conviction, though the FBI also noted several potential connections to organized crime. These include Steinbrenner attending a dinner for mafia crime boss Anthony Scotto, as well as links to Cleveland crime figures. It even details a March 1981 incident where Steinbrenner may have tried to intimidate a racehorse owner by sending goons after him. However, the files also show Steinbrenner aiding the FBI, which is what led to his receiving a pardon. Apparently, it's not illegal if you do it for the government.